Hi, I'm Rocco Steno, and welcome to Storymakers. Today, we have Jess Browlier with us. He's the author of The Library Bat, The New Guard. Is that a library bat? Yes, Rocco, that's Booker. Let's give him a book to guard. And this book is the first in the Booker the Library Bat series. Jess, tell us about it. The series is about Booker, a little cute bat who likes books, and he's got this great new job. And the job is to work in this library, and at night go out within the library and eat bugs that otherwise wreck books. So that's why he's called a guard. And this is his first night on the job in this first book in the series. So we tell the story of how he arrives to the library, and he meets some of the other guards, and, you know, it's like all of us first day on a new job or first day in a new class. He's a little bit nervous about where this is going to work out. Is he going to get along with the other guards? Is he going to be funny enough or brave enough? So he wanders around just a little bit. And wouldn't you know it, the first thing he bumps into is a book thief, this bad guy who's in the rare book room. And he's in there and he's pulled out a dagger and he's cutting pages out of a book. And Booker's like, oh, I'm all by myself. There's no other guards around. It's my first night in a job. What do I do? And that's our story. So I understand this is based on a true story. So for this particular story in the series, I focused on the Jojin Library in Cumbria, Portugal, where the bats, uh, up to about 12 of them, work and live in the library. During the day, they're behind the bookshelves, and they come out at night to eat the bugs. And of course, if you eat a lot of bugs, you end up pooping. And so what they do at the library, and they've done it for hundreds of years, is at nighttime, as the library's closing, they bring out these leather sheets and put them over the table so that there's no bat poop that might harm the table in any way. And if the bats miss those sheets and get a little bit of poop on the library floor, that's okay. They come in and they mop it and clean it up uh, in the morning. And uh, so we work that poop into the story. So the library workers are on poop patrol. Yes, and it's not a bad job. It's actually, as we're sitting here talking and they're getting ready to open up that library, the person doing that work, it's very likely that their parents did that work and their grandparents did that work. So just in the same way that the bats live there generation after generation, the workers also work there generation after generation. And you mentioned a rare book room. Yeah, that's really important. The rare book room has the most valuable of all these hundreds of thousands of books that are in this library. And what makes them so valuable is not just that they're old and not just that they have great content, but they have original art in them. The way that a book like that would have been made hundreds of years ago is where there's art on a page, an artist sat down and painted on that page. And so you actually have a volume of handmade art in those books. And that's why they're so incredibly valuable and why Booker has to really look out for that room. One of the bats, it's named Rocco. Is it after me? <laughs> well, I wish it was, but it's actually inspired by a friend of mine. Rocco is the coolest of the bats. There's four bats. There's Booker, obviously, and then there's Katie, who likes to eat big bugs and brags about it and burps sometimes. And then there's Teddy, who likes to go out on great adventures. But then there's Rocco, and he's probably the biggest of the bats. He's probably got some good-looking hair on him. He's a sort of bat. He walks in or flies into a room. People take notice. He probably dances well. He's a cool guy. <laughs> so if Booker can win Rocco over, it would be really important to make Booker comfortable and do a better job. I still think it's based on me. It is, really. <laughs> I just didn't want to have to pay you anything. <laughs> you must know many bat facts because you're writing a series of books based on bats. So do you have a few you want to share with us? So the bats that work in this library are called Pippenstel bats. They're not uncommon. They're all around the world, but they're very small, actually. They're only one to two inches in length, although their wingspan uh, can go up to 10 inches. And the, what makes them so special at working in a library at night is they don't see the way that us humans see. They use something called echolocation, which is basically they send out a very high-pitched noise depending on how it echoes, like if you're screaming in a canyon, you get an echo. They get an echo and they can find their bugs that way and they make sure they don't slam into a bookshelf. And that becomes part of the story because when Booker has to protect against this bad guy, one of his advantages is that he can maneuver through the dark, whereas the bad guy cannot. One of the other really interesting things about these bats is 
Uh, once they're done eating the bugs that they have to do every night, they then go out into the city in which the library is located. They have to go out and get some water, first of all, but they also go out there to have great adventures and discover the city. And it's a beautiful city with churches and, and buildings and a river. And the illustrator, Jeff Harder, does a great job on the illustrations and makes it really a welcoming scene. Libraries all over the place have different types of animals. I know there's library cats and there may be library dogs. And you know, it might be fun to think of an animal that you would want to have in your library. I would pick potbelly pigs because they're very intelligent, okay. number one. The children that come into the library can spend some time reading to the potbelly pigs. And if anyone's going to break in to the library at night, they could oink away and scare the people away. I love that idea. We've got a lot of books in this series. Maybe we'll have to get Booker together with one of your pigs. What animal would you like to live in your library? Let us know in the comment section and tell us why. Jess, can I have that book? Oh, well, sure. Rocco would oh, be well, very well, happy. Well, thank you. Thank you. And thank you for being here with thank us you. today. This was a delight. And remember, until next time, read a book in any format. Nice bow tie, Rocco. <laughs>